The return we've all been waiting for. More than 50 years ago, humans walked on the moon for the first time. Since then, silence. A dusty footprint. A few flags. But no return. Now, NASA is ready to change that. The Artemis 3 mission will take us back, not just to revisit, but to build, explore, and prepare for Mars. And this time, we're not going alone. Part 1. What is Artemis, and why does it matter now? Named after Apollo's twin sister, Artemis is NASA's bold program to bring humans back to the moon and eventually to Mars. But why go back at all because the moon isn't just a dead rock in space, it's a stepping stone. It's where we'll test technologies for deep space, practice long-term survival, and maybe find resources that can fuel our future. Lunar ice means water, and water means oxygen and fuel. The moon can become a base for Mars missions and beyond. This mission also brings a new generation of astronauts, including the first woman and the first person of color to step on the moon. PART 2, Artemis I and 2, The Road to Artemis 3. Before we dive into Artemis 3, let's rewind. Artemis I was a major uncrewed test flight. It launched the Orion spacecraft into lunar orbit, tested its systems, and brought it back safely. No astronauts, just a full-scale rehearsal. Artemis II will be the first crewed mission, a flyby around the moon to test life support and communication systems. And then comes Artemis III, the one that will finally land humans on the moon again. Part 3, Artemis III, Mission Overview. Here's how the mission will go. Launch from Kennedy Space Center on NASA's powerful Space Launch System rocket. The Orion spacecraft will carry astronauts into lunar orbit. Once there, they'll dock with a separate lander, a version of SpaceX's Starship customized for the moon. That lander will take two astronauts down to the lunar surface, specifically to the moon's South Pole, a place humans have never explored before. Why the South Pole? It holds permanently shadowed craters filled with frozen water, a possible resource for survival and fuel production. Part 4. The Crew. Who's Going? NASA hasn't officially named the Artemis 3 crew yet, but some details are clear. At least one astronaut will be a woman, the first to walk on the moon. Another astronaut will likely be the first person of color to walk on the lunar surface. This mission represents not just exploration, but progress in diversity, inclusion, and the next generation of leadership in space. Part 5. What will they do on the moon? Unlike the Apollo missions, Artemis 3 isn't about planting a flag and leaving. This is about setting the stage for a long-term lunar presence, and every moment on the surface will count. Once they land near the lunar south pole, the astronauts will step out in next-gen lunar suits designed for flexibility, longer mobility, and even dust resistance. These suits are being developed with lessons from Apollo but with a future in mind. Here's what the astronauts will actually do during their roughly 6.5 days on the surface. Sample collection, they'll collect pristine rock and soil samples from unexplored regions, including ice deposits hidden in permanently shadowed craters. This material could tell us how the moon and the entire inner solar system evolved. Ice mapping, using specialized instruments, they'll attempt to locate and analyze frozen water, one of the most valuable resources in space. If we can mine and convert that ice, it means drinking water, breathable oxygen, and even hydrogen fuel for rockets. Science payloads, they'll deploy sensors to monitor seismic activity, radiation exposure, and electromagnetic fields. The moon isn't dead, and understanding its interior could change how we think about planetary bodies. Technology Testing the astronauts will test mobility systems, life support tech, and lunar rovers that could be used in future missions, including for Mars. Even the process of charging and operating tech in the harsh lunar environment is a critical challenge. What they'll learn in those six days will guide the next 60 years of space exploration. Part 6. Challenges of Returning to the Moon 
Artemis III might sound like a victory lap, but in reality, it's one of the most complex, risky space missions NASA has ever attempted. First, there's the launch itself. The SLS Space Launch System is the most powerful rocket ever built, but it's expensive and delays have plagued it. A single failure in any stage, from liftoff to docking, could jeopardize the entire mission. Then, there's the Lunar South Pole, one of the most scientifically promising but technically dangerous places to land. Steep slopes, massive boulders, deep craters, and long shadows make navigation a nightmare. Autonomous landing systems must be flawless. Once on the moon, astronauts face a host of survival issues. Radiation, there's no atmosphere or magnetic field to shield them. One unexpected solar flare could be deadly. Lunar dust, it's ultrafine, sharp like glass, and can clog machinery, damage suits, and even irritate lungs. Temperature extremes, temperatures swing from plus 120 degrees Celsius to minus 170 degrees Celsius. Just standing in sunlight versus shadow can mean a 100 degree difference. Communication delays. Operating near the lunar south pole could mean occasional radio blackouts with Earth. That's dangerous during emergencies. Part 7. Why this mission changes everything. If Artemis 3 succeeds, it won't just be remembered as a scientific achievement. It will be seen as the turning point when humanity became truly multi-planetary. The moon will become more than just a destination. It will become a launch pad, a research lab, and a training ground for the journey to Mars. Here's what changes if Artemis 3 works. We prove that we can build a base on another world. We unlock access to resources like water, oxygen, and lunar materials. We normalize deep space survival, testing systems for months, not hours. We bring in international allies and private companies to help build the space economy. And most importantly, we start thinking long term. Kids growing up today may one day live or work on the moon and Mars. It's no longer science fiction. It's a stop on the roadmap. Artemis 3 isn't the end of a space program. It's the beginning of an era. Part 8. Global Collaboration and Private Space Artemis is not just about NASA. This is the first truly global moon mission in history. The European Space Agency provides the power and propulsion systems for Orion. Japan is helping build critical modules for the Gateway, the Lunar Orbit Station. Canada is contributing a next-gen robotic arm, Canadarm3, for space operations. And let's not forget the private sector. SpaceX is building the Lunar Lander, a customized version of Starship capable of vertical landing on the Moon. Blue Origin is working on future cargo landers. Axiom Space, Dynetics, and others are competing to build space habitats, supply ships, and lunar tools. This is the future of space, not a Cold War space race, but a collaborative ecosystem. Government space agencies handle exploration and safety, while private companies accelerate innovation. The moon isn't just a frontier. It's the first space economy and Artemis 3 is laying the groundwork for it all. Part 9. What could delay it? An honest look. As of now, Artemis 3 is tentatively scheduled for September 2026, but that date isn't locked. There are reasons to be cautious. Technical delays with SpaceX's Starship, which still hasn't proven it can land and return from the moon. Funding debates in the U.S. government, space exploration is expensive and every budget year brings uncertainty. Hardware readiness, from space suits to docking systems, all components must work perfectly together. Regulatory reviews and safety tests often take months longer than planned. And don't forget, this is human space flight. One missed deadline, one failed engine, one unexpected solar flare, and the whole mission shifts. But here's the good news. NASA has momentum. Artemis I was successful. Artemis II is fully funded and moving forward. Starship is being tested aggressively. Even if it slips to 2027, Artemis III is not a dream, it's a pipeline. The next giant leap. For most of us alive today, we've never seen a human walk on another world. That's about to change. 
Artemis III will return us to the moon not to relive the past, but to shape the future. This time, it's about staying longer, learning more, and going farther. Because the moon is no longer the finish line. It's the starting line. The next generation of astronauts is already training. The next base is already being designed. And the first mission to Mars. That starts right here, with this. If you want to follow humanity's greatest journey, from Earth to Moon to Mars and beyond, stay with us. This is Space Pulse, and this is only the beginning.